Good morning, good morning, my crafty friends. Hello and welcome to my craft room. <laughs> my name is Daryl Walter of Pickled Peppers Creative Cafe at pickledpeperscreative.com. Today is Saturday, August 3rd, 2024, and I am here with you for some coffee and crafts. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on into my craft room. This is the room that um, makes the magic happen. I'm surrounded, as you can see, with um, crafty goodness, and it helps me to be inspired to share with you. So welcome, welcome. I am super happy that you're here. Come on in. Um, let's see, what do we have to talk about today? We're going to get turned down pretty quickly because I'm going to be cutting um, the project that we will be creating. I'm going to cut it with you um, right on camera. Um, and so I don't really think it's a cute, simple, and quick card, um, a fun fold for you, my favorite thing to bring to you. And regular cards are, are nice too. Stamping and looking at um, products is nice as well. Um, so, but just because the process is a little longer and we're gonna do some cutting, we'll get turned down pretty soon. Um, if it's your first time here, welcome. I am super happy to meet you. And if it is your 50th time here, I am super excited that you came back. All right, so while we're creating, if you would like to chat with me, I would love it if you chatted with me in the comments. Um, if for some reason I'm not able to see your comments or questions during the um, video taping, then I will go back after after um, the video, the live video, and I'll respond to your questions and comments. So yeah. Um, let's see, one, the only announcement that I have for you today is um, bonus days. So if you were um, able to shop during bonus days, this is redemption month. So all through the month of August, you will be able to redeem your bonus day coupon. So you should have gotten um, a an email from Stampin' Up! with a numeric code um, and that constitutes your um, or takes the place of your coupon and you just enter it when you're ordering so good morning Julie good morning Julie S and Julie D <laughs> good morning good morning welcome thank you so much for being here I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the camera um, because like I said, we're going to be cutting today on camera too. So I just want to make sure that we have ample time to share goodness with you. <laughs> How are you guys? Thank you for being here. Super excited that you're here. I have my catalog in the center of my desk because it kind of helps me while I'm adjusting the camera to make sure that I'm in focus and frame so I can show you my hands and not my desktop, right? Because that is way important. <laughs> and then um, it also helps, um, helps to make sure that I, I'm in frame mainly. So, all right. So that was the announcement was about bonus days. So let us talk about what we're going to be creating today and the products that we're going to be using. So, excuse me, we, we are going to be using um, designer series paper that coordinates with one stamp set. Good morning, Polly. Welcome. Thanks for hanging out in my craft room. Hey, by the way, does everyone have their drink with them? I have my double smackaroo bubba cup of coffee. So I hope you have something warm in your cup too. So um, we're going to be using um, designer series paper. Let's go ahead and look, take a quick look at it. I have all my supplies here that we're going to be using. Um, so I'm using designer series paper from one that coordinates with one bundle. 
and then we're going to be using another bundle to stamp with. But the designer series paper that we're using today, it's called To Market. Can you see that? To Market 12 by 12. So when we have new releases of designer series paper, regardless to what suite of products it belongs to, I like to get as many of them as I can. This one I was a little bit on the fence about. Um, let me show you. It is called To Market and I think it's on page 36. Um, I did not, I'm telling you that because I did not get yet. It's on pages actually 38 and 39. I did not get the um, I didn't get the coordinating stamp set and dies because I honestly, it looks like romaine lettuce here and some carrots and I do like fruits and vegetables, but I just couldn't, um, I couldn't wrap my mind around how I would use it. So I did grab the gems and the designer series paper and I just wanted to show you. So can you see that piece of, um, that piece of paper there with the carrots and the lettuce and tomatoes. I don't know what else is there. I did use the reverse side of it, um, but I didn't know quite how to use it, which is why I used it first. Oh, and then um, let's take a quick look at what I have left. I showed you in the catalog, but the other pages um, are super, super cute. We're gonna be using this pattern here. I think it's super, super lovely. There are, here, let's just take it out. I'll put it back later. Um, there are these bags and I struggled a bit with how I would use this as well, but I have an idea and maybe I'll bring that back. So I won't, I won't let the cat out of the bag right now. And then there are tomatoes. Can you see that? Tomatoes on the vine. I, again, but everything else is cute. There are um, uh, bundles of flowers and then more flowers. So, and then um, we have these patterns on the back, which I'm a super duper fan of gingham and plaid. Anything gingham and plaid. Oh, and polka dots, polka dots too. So that's what the reverse side looks like. Okay. So we talked about this. I do have a piece of the, um, I do have a piece of the pattern that we're going to be using today. And then um, the stamp set that I'm going to be using today, Stampin' Punch is the Heartfelt Hexagon. So I love punches. Punches are so straightforward. Um, so we're gonna be using Heartfelt Hexagon. And let me tell you too, I wanna give a shout out to Cheryl Stampin Squad. I've actually, the card that we're making, I've seen it on Pinterest quite a bit, but she actually, I saw her create it recently. So I'm gonna recreate it. So thank you so much, Cheryl. There's a shout out for that. And then I have for embellishment, um, the iridescent faceted gems. Let me bring those close. Aren't these lovely? I don't know. Um, I don't know how to get it to shine on camera the way the way that I see it. But but bling is always for me, 100%. I love it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started cutting. We're gonna cut everything right on camera. So the first thing that we're gonna do is bring in. Oh, let me tell you what I have. So here's that sheet of designer series paper and um, the background is Blackberry Bliss. So I'm gonna make the um, card base with Blackberry Bliss as well. And then I have some white and um, a scrap piece of the Blackberry Bliss as well. And we'll start by cutting the designer series paper and then we'll move on to the cardstock. And then we'll end with our little basic white piece. So this uh, uh, initially was a 12 by 12 piece of designer series paper. So I am going to cut it um, at four, four inches. So I'm gonna take a four inch strip 
phone, my blade is um, dragging a bit. It might be time to change it. Okay, so we have this four inch piece and then I'm just going to turn it around. We need one piece that is four by four and one piece that is four by five and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut the five and a quarter. We'll cut this right off. Oh, let's get our cutting blade. And then we'll set this aside for just a moment. And then we need another piece that is um, four by four. So we're just going to cut this to four and we'll have a little bit of leftover, like three and three quarters or something. And I'm actually going to save this. I like to save my scraps if they're big enough um, to use on another project. All right, so let's put this aside as well. So we needed um, these two pieces of designer series paper. Now let's move on to our cardstock. I am going to cut it so it's eight and a half by 11. I have the eight inch, eight and a half inch side to the top of my trimmer. So I'm gonna cut this in half at four and a quarter. Cut it right in half. I keep losing my cutting blade. I'm not accustomed to having it um, in the down, so far down. All right, we'll sit this here for a moment. So we need um, one piece that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So we've already cut it at four and a quarter. I'm just going to cut a piece off at four and a quarter. So then we have that square piece that we're looking for. And then I'm gonna put the remainder of this aside and bring in the other half because we're just going to cut this in half. So it's already um, four and a quarter and we need two pieces that are four and a quarter by five and a half. So we've already cut it at four and a quarter and then five and a half is the halfway point. So we should have the two pieces that we require. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put this aside because I don't wanna get it confused. We don't need it and I don't wanna grab it later. All right, we'll put those two aside. And then finally, we need a piece of basic white that is two and three quarters by four. So this is a scrap, but I knew that um, it would be big enough for um, the scrap that we needed, also for the piece that we need. So let's see, it's four and a quarter. So I'm gonna turn it around and cut it at two and three quarters. And that leaves us a big piece of scrap. We're gonna punch out of that, so we need that piece. And then turn this around and make sure that it's just, it's cut at, um, two and three quarters. So, I'm sorry, at four, we have our two and three quarter inch piece. So we'll cut this right down to four. And then I think with that, we are done with the cutting. Um, we do need to do just a little bit of scoring. So I'm gonna grab one of the Blackberry Bliss pieces that is five and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half. And um, we're gonna turn it around with the um, five and a half inch side towards the top of the trimmer. And we're gonna score it, we'll make two score marks. Um, one at one and a quarter, so let's do that. One and one quarter inch. You guys, this card is super cute and super easy to make. I love when card direct or tutorials or directions are all done in quarters of an inch because then I don't have to think we're so used to you know it's easy to do the math let's say that and then we need to score it again at two and a half so let's go ahead and do that and um, I think we're done I think we're done so let's go ahead and get rid of our trimmer we'll set that aside all right, I'm gonna bring in all of our little lovely pieces here because we're gonna, um, I like to, you know, I like to adhere what we can because 
That way we don't lose track of something. So I'm gonna fold on the first score line. And so that we have this little fold and then that second score line will fold to the back. I'm just gonna burnish this a little bit too. See if I can get my bone folder in there. All right, so that leaves us with this little piece. I'm gonna scooch that over for a minute. We don't need any more bone folder. I am gonna be using liquid glue also, and um, I'll show you why in a minute. But let's glue down the pieces that we can. So we have that four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and then that five and a half by four and a quarter. So we have our largest piece of designer series paper. I'm just gonna go ahead and adhere it down now. That way we don't have to um, keep track of it. You know what? Hmm. What if we use the reverse side? I was going to use the flowery side. This one's going to go there. I was gonna use the flowery side, but look at this. So it's like um, peach pie and um, pumpkin pie. I think that's what it looks like. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. I really like the flowers and I was gonna do like um, both patterns. Oh geez, this is being a little fussy. There we go. Um, I was going to do the same pattern, I meant to say, on both um, sides, both patterns facing outward. But I kind of like the contrast here. I love polka dots. Contrast is nice, so we're gonna flip it right over. And we'll glue that down. And then we'll grab this one and we'll adhere this down as well. I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus. It's my favorite, favorite adhesive because it's a strong adhesive. So it takes the place of like tear and tape or if you use the, um, like the red back tape or, um, you know, another double-sided strong adhesive. This does everything. So all I need is that tape runner. So it's my favorite for that reason. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the flower pattern. This is gonna be the front of our card. So we're gonna glue this right down. There we go. All right, so um, let's do some stamping. And then we'll do a little bit more assembly and then, um, and then we should be done. So, we don't need this scrap yet. I'm going to put that aside. Oh, yes, we do. I just said we were going to do some stamping. So let's take a closer look at the stamp set because we didn't do that. Hi, Julie. That adhesive. Isn't it amazing? It is my favorite. My favorite. I can use it for everything. Well, almost everything. So the Heartfelt Hexagons, um, or Hexagon, it has um, Mr. and Mrs., so it could be a wedding card. I hope your day is filled with joy. I'm sending you lots of, lo um, lots of love and hugs. Let's eat cake. So this could be wedding. It could be birthday. And then um, there's a sympathy and then for you. So if you notice, there are these two images um, or outlines that go right with the punch. So I'm gonna use this one. I've never used that one. <laughs> I just use this one all the time because I don't know. I don't know why. I prefer it, I guess. Okay, let's go ahead and put this on the block. I'm shameful if you guys notice. I'm notorious for throwing my stamps back in the case without cleaning them and then and then I do clean them, I do clean them. Usually when I open it and see that there's a color on it that's not going to quite jive with the color that I'm using, and then, and then I clean it. That's my dirty little secret. <laughs> All right, so again, we're gonna use this, and then the sentiment I'm gonna use is Let's Eat Cake. 
because it's the most versatile. In my opinion, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be so. And I did bring out Black Memento, but we're going to use, we're going to use the Blackberry Bliss. Hey, by the way, look at this stamp pad, you guys. If any of you have been with Stampin', Stampin Up! for a while, do you notice how, um, how my stamp pad is old? And it still stamps pretty good. I think it needs to be inked up a bit. I noticed um, that it's a little dry. But I have had it forever and it still works. And I have re replaced most of my um, stamp pads. But I do have a couple of older ones that still need to replace. Or I have the replacement and I just haven't bothered to open it. All right, so we're going to stamp this using the Blackberry Bliss. I'm going to put that way out of the way. My fingers are ink magnets. And then we're going to take that sentiment, let's eat cake. And we're going to stamp that right down in the center. Because I can use this for a birthday card. All right, I think that's all the stamping we're going to do. I'm not gonna put an inside sentiment, and that's, um, that's my normal business. I don't, um, I don't like to stamp the sentiment on the inside of the card, unless I'm actually giving the card away at that moment. That way it lets me be a little versatile. All right, so when I punch this, I am going to punch upside down. And um, so this way I can see how I line it up. Can you see what I mean? So if I punch upside down, I can line this up. Here, let's turn it towards me so I make sure that I'm true to my word here. There we go. So you see how I was able to line the punch out and I'm making sure then I can punch with confidence and make sure that I'm not punching over any of the um, the part that I inked. And then I'm going to also bring in um, the spare piece or scrap piece of Blackberry Bliss and I'm going to punch another hexagon out. Um, this is one of my favorite things to do. I forgot about it until I was uh, snooping around to see what I wanted to create for today. So we're going to take this, um, the plain Blackberry Bliss hexagon punch, and we're going to cut it right down the center. Right down the center we go. And then... We're going to take it and add kind of a shadow on the top and then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. All right, so I think that I will, let's go ahead and put some seal plus let's see if I can get away with doing it this way. A little at the top there and at the bottom. And let's see if I can get away with that amount of adhesive. So again, oh, let's get back here. Thank goodness for that extra camera. I can kind of keep my hands in frame. Oh yeah, that's gonna work great, look at that. All right, and then we'll just do the other one. Let's flip it around. I feel a little more confident with my right hand holding the largest piece. It's kind of hard when my head is so far away from. There we go. We could have made that shadow a little smaller, but. All right, there's our shadow, and we'll figure out how we're gonna use um, our embellishment pretty soon. All right, so let's bring in the rest of the card now and talk about what we're doing here. Let's make sure we get, get in frame. All right, so this little 
piece that we made is going to create kind of a springboard. It's um, it's a Z fold, and so this is going to be the front of the card, and I'm going to add adhesive on this little springboard, and then this needs to go. Let's get this out of the way. There we go. So this is going to need to go right in the center of this, this mat. Okay, so if you guys have, if you guys have created with me before, you know that I'm an eyeballer. I, if I don't have to measure, I don't. But you can, if you're not, if you don't feel confident, if you have your grid paper or a ruler, you can kind of, you can measure, but I, I don't do it if I don't have to. And I feel pretty confident here. So I'm just gonna add some adhesive to the springboard. I don't know what else to call it, so I'm gonna call it a springboard. And I, I am putting liquid because that's gonna allow me some time to move it around and get it right in the center. All right, so I'm gonna kind of eyeball it on the one side and lay it down. And I think that's pretty close to the center. I might be off a smidgen. And I am gonna pick it up and just kind of square it up a little bit on the top and bottom. But yeah, I'm just eyeballing it because that's what I am, an eyeballer. And you see I have a little bit here and I am gonna take my scrap and just, oh here, let's take this little spatula. Let's see, I have a little spatula. I'm just gonna wipe it away because I'm messy. I don't trust myself not to put my hand in it. All right, that's good enough for now. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is bring in our card base because this next board, the springboard, the back side of the springboard, so we're gonna put glue all over it. And this will need to go right down in the center of our card base. So let's just go ahead and add some glue to the back of our springboard. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna repeat that process, kind of holding it. And I'm eyeballing. Once again, you may not wanna eyeball if you don't feel confident. You can use your grid paper to do it, but I'm okay with eyeballing. And then I'm just gonna press it down. I think I need to move it a little bit. There we go. All right, we'll give this a minute, just a second, I think, to set. All right, so now can you see what we have here? Oh, thank you, Julie. Hi, Paul. Yes, it is. It's a cute, cute stamp set and punch. All right, so this is how our card is going to open. So we need to make sure, there we go. There's the inside of our card. So the last thing that we're gonna do, this little piece, so it's, it, it's book card or book fold orientation. And we're gonna bring in our piece of basic white. So this is where you're gonna stamp your sentiment. This actually folds backwards. I didn't kind of want to do it. There we go. Because um, I'm not sure the glue is exactly dry, but we're gonna put this here. And once again, I'm not gonna stamp the sentiment on it because I prefer to leave it blank. That way 
I can um, add whatever sentiment when I get ready to use it. And like I said, this could be used for a birthday, it can be used for a wedding, it could be used for a shower, a baby shower, um, a bridal shower. And then we're just gonna stick this down. So let's grab some Stampin' Dimensionals. Let's see. Okay. I have a sheet here. And should I put that right in the center? Let's see. I feel like it would be ungrounded. So I'm going to ad lib here a little bit. This is my, um, no, I have a, have a shorter piece. We have a shorter piece, don't we? See what I did with it. That smaller piece that I was going to save for another card. Let's see if we can get away with that. Yes, we can indeed. So I'm going to cut this down. Let me bring my paper trimmer back in. And I'm gonna cut this down to, let's do one inch. So it, I think it should be one by four. And the reason I'm doing this is so that um, our sentiment is grounded. I don't want it to just float in the air. That looks kind of weird. So I'm gonna put this down. Oh, perfect. And then we'll mount, we'll mount our sentiment on top of it. I wonder if we should go lower or in the center. Oh, it's more interesting if it's lower. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn this around to me. I'm sorry, you guys, I am not the greatest um, upside down assembler. I have to have it towards me. I am just not that confident. One day my skills may may improve in that area, but that day is not today. This is being a little fussy. I think it's getting towards the end. There we go. All right, so I'm going to put this on the bottom third. It, again, it's one by four put it up a little higher. So like on the bottom third of our work here. And then I think I'm still going to stick with it right in the center. All right, let's grab some Stampin' Dimensionals because there is zero, zero, zero chance that everything is going to be flat in my world. All right, and then we're just gonna put this, I do like it in the center. So I, I'm okay, I think that putting the strip that we put there so that our um, element is anchored to something and not floating, um, I think that's good enough for the interest. And then here's the inside of our card. Isn't that fun? So let me show you kind of and then close. All right. And then the last thing we're going to do is add an embellishment. <laughs> and again, I'm using the iridescent, iridescent faceted gems. Let's see if you can see them. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Polly. Isn't this fun? So maybe you can see these a little better since they're out of the package. And um, you know what? I'm gonna just, let's grab our take your pick tool. I'm gonna put one at the bottom. I think the larger one right here at the bottom of the cake. And then um, I think I'm gonna let that be that. I like it. I like it understated. 
put those away in a minute. All right, so here is our finished pro project. Thank you, Julie, isn't it cute? I think it is just cute. And like I said, the reason that I shared what I did about that designer series paper is at first glance, because I saw the vegetables, um, in particular, the romaine, I, I thought to myself, gosh, I don't know how I'll, I'll use that paper. But when I got it, I was really pleasantly surprised at how pretty it actually is. And I love the Blackberry Bliss with the pumpkin pie um, and the peach pie. And the other color there, let's see if... Let's see if I can tell you what that other color is, because I don't know. I think it might be um, Berry Burst or, um, let's see, it looks like this, which would be Melon Mambo. Let's see what Stampin' Up! says. Oh, they don't. They say real red. Oh, that doesn't look real red to me, but that's what they say. <laughs> All right, so today we use mainly stamps, inks, and paper. Remember, we use the Heartfelt Hexagon. You can find it in my online store. There's a link in the description above if you want to pop over and look at it. And the Coordinating Punch, which is super, super fun. And then we used the Iridescent Faceted Gems and the two market designer series paper. And then we paired it with this fun little fold. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and I'll turn my camera off. And I'll try not to make it too noisy for you. Hello there. <laughs> All right, you guys, I did want to remind next week I am on vacation. Um, and so I won't be here on Saturday um, to share with you, but I will be back the following Saturday and I have new product. Um, it's already started coming in. So I have new stuff to be able to share with you. Maybe a sneak peek of um, some upcoming products, we'll see. So I won't see you next weekend. I will miss you. I hope that you get lots of crafting time um, during that time, our time away. I'm going to get as much in as I can as well. All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere else in the world. Time is a precious commodity, and you decided to spend your time with me. So thank you so much. Thank you, Julie. Ha thank you so much. You guys have a fantastic and crafty weekend or whatever it is you do. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.